And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, veteran of a veteran of mo of multiple comic projects, two at least two of which we've had uh, we've had on the show we've had on the show, um th those of course being Ardana and Eternal Armor, and now for a third one with with one of the first uh, with the proclaimed world's first ever pulp heroines magazine known as simply Heroin Adventure. The one and only, he is not a fake holiday, he is a real holiday, it is Wyatt Holiday. How you doing What's today, up, man? man? <laughs> thanks for having me back at the temple, it's always fun to be here, man. Thank you for, thank you for, thank you for coming back in, I know it's been, I know it's been a hot minute since I had you, since I had you on for us to talk about giant robots, and now we're, and now, now we're, and now we're talking about giant pulp. Yeah, we are. We're giant something, right? Uh, Not to be confused play, uh, with our egos. <laughs> oh. So, um, yeah, not exactly the same type of heroin adventure a uh, 1990s rock star would have, but yeah. it's going to be pretty cool nonetheless. Look, my name is Mildred the Monk, not Motley Crue. <laughs> um, but when it comes... But when it comes to when it comes to this project, there's all now there's always been a degree of pulpiness with the previous entries that we've talked about. But was that was something like heroin adventure something that you had the ba in the back burner, or was it just a case of wanting wanting to go full pulp eventually? Um, I've had it in the back burner. Um, oh gosh, uh, maybe about ten years, I guess. So. Um... Yeah, it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. I just didn't know. I never really knew how or where the opportunity, you know, to do it would present itself. But, um, but yeah, it's something I wanted to do for quite a long time now. What would what would you say was your first introduction to this to this kind of um, pulp? And what do you think? What do you think the appeal is with it? Um, when I was about fifteen, I was in my local comic shop at the time and um <clears throat> they had a little rack that i guess was kind of like what you know you'd best compare it to an end cap today um but they had a little rack that uh had some pulp magazines on there there were some doc savage and the shadow and a couple others um and uh there was a hmm? yeah weird tales that kind of stuff um of course uh amazing story mm -hmm. all those good ones um <clears throat> and um yeah, there was a Doc Savage cover that was there that just kind of jumped out at me, and um, I picked it up, and ever since then, I've been a fan and collector for many years now. It's been a while since I was 15, yeah. but... Um, when you were growing up, did you ever, did you ever see any of the, did you ever see any of the films that were, during that brief period in the 90s when they were trying to... When they're trying to adapt some of some of the old pulp superheroes into film form. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the like like the Shadow with the the Alec Baldwin film. There, um, there was the Shadow, and there was also the Phantom. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know some people don't. I know some people don't count don't count the Phantom in that in that pulp sense. Um, but as far as far as I'm concerned, if it fits, it sits. Yeah, I agree. Um, even though the Rocketeer wasn't technically a character from back in the day, um, certainly the Rocketeer fits as well. Yeah. Um, so and with, with that with that kind of thing in mind, and yet given how given how some people will split hairs about some, about a character like the Phantom, which I will free I will freely admit that my first introduction to that character wasn't the old school Phantom, but the the future cartoon. Okay, yeah, my introduction was um, <laughs> Defenders of the Earth. So, I'm not sure which I'm not sure which one is worse, but um, okay, <laughs> but um, well, at the very least, Phantom 2040 was was one of the was one of the rare times that Peter Chung was able to do 
a a, a um cartoon without spandex, without um either spandex or speedos. <laughs> for the for the record, his other his other works were um were were stuff. His big his big claim to fame, of course, is Aeon Flux, but he also did um Reign the Conqueror, which was that um dramatized version of Alexander the Great where nobody wears pants. Oh, okay. I have not seen that one. <laughs> um, but what? But um, what I'd like to what I'd like to get into is what. For, given how people kind of get lost in, can get lost in the weeds with definitions at times, what defines pulp adventure to you? Well, of course, technically the term comes from the, um, the you know the type of paper that they use. Yeah, the uh, sh the shitty paper quality at the time. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They. Uh, they started that with Argosy magazine in 1896, and um, and then a lot of those other magazines followed suit, and then it just they kind of all went that direction. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Um, as far as your question, though, um, you know, as far as the definition, I would say that um, it's uh, you know, pulpy adventure is. Uh, fast-paced, it's pure escapism, it's enhanced by colorful characters and interesting locations, mm -hmm. and, uh, like I say, it's fast-paced and action-packed, and, uh, they don't spend a lot of time sitting around the dinner table, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, I can, I can see that, and there's, um, with a lot of, with a lot of the ones that I've seen, there's often, there's often an, un there's often an underpinning of... Of ex of explore of exploring the, of exploring the mysterious and strange mm -hmm. far off areas. Yeah, the the mysterious, the unknown, the uh, your lost worlds and your um, undiscovered technologies and things of that nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot a lot of a lot of those early ones were were fo were um had a, had a focus on the. On the near or f on the near or far east, that's that's certainly the case. Mm -hmm. But I'd say I'd say for, I'd say for a lot of people that was that was one of the rare cases of of a of a largely unexplored of a largely unexplored um and and somewhat isolationist um t plot plot of land. That's why you that's why you'd have a lot of pulp adventures in. Not necess not necessarily far east Asia, but near but near east, like like around the around the area where the hip where the Himalayas are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Tibet places places like Tibet, I'd I'd see get brought up in in frequently. Pl um, places like Mongolia, places places where there's not where there's not a whole lot where you where it could be argued that there's not a whole lot of what would be considered civilization by a American or a Euro or a European sense, um, right? And I and um, of course, of course, the big example like I think of when it comes to this kind of thing is the fact that in the in that um in that film in that film for the shadow, his nemesis is Genghis Khan. Mm -hmm. Um, and the whole thing of him go of him going to Tibet to which is where he learned how to how to do his mind tricks you know right the old jedi mind trick f a few decades before it's time yeah um but within within the concept of her oh, heroin adventure you're go you are very clearly going the superhero route um what what when it comes to trying to do superhero in this sort of pulp in this sort of pulp setup um what are some of the things that that what are what would you say are some of the obvious and less obvious things that you try that you try and avoid so it does so it doesn't feel like just another superhero? Um, for one thing, you have to you you have to tone everything down pretty greatly from what we consider, you know, modern superhero. Um, <clears throat> Because I wanted to feel, I wanted it to feel authentic as far as like, uh, 
like I said, we're talking Doc Savage, The Shadow. Um, not incredible. Not not you know leaping single you know buildings in a single bound. Not that type of thing. Um, but more along the lines of more like a scaled down superhero. Like uh, like imagine if they didn't have them. You know you know imagine if special effects weren't weren't up to par at the time. Like uh, for example. Um, the Lou Ferrigno Incredible Hulk show mm-hmm. or the Wonder Woman show with Linda Carter are both great examples where... Um, or ISIS if you're desperate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're desperate, yeah. Um, yeah, great uh, great examples there as far as... Um, because since we're talking about uh, a time period technically before... Super duper heroes. You're usually dealing with characters with, um, even if they have powers, um, it's more along the lines of one or two neat tricks as opposed to full blown superheroes. So, uh, you know, uh, our protagonist, um, you know, she could probably bust through a wall. She could probably pick up the back of a car, but still very much within a. Um, can't really say believable, but you know, uh, a lower a lower power level compared to, uh, say, Superman. Would you say so. Would you say that it's that um that power scaling wise, it's it's right it's right on that bo- it's right on that borderline between between um stri- between street level and um and si- between street and city level and nation level. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah, you yeah, you're looking at a lot of, you know, a lot of those types uh Daredevil. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Daredevil the Punisher. Yeah, it's very much somewhere between uh street city level heroes today, you know, like Nightwing and such. Uh somewhere between that and a lot of your early golden age characters like um Justice Society. Yeah, I can, so, I can, I can like see. Wesley Dodd, Sandman, mm-hmm. and those guys, you know. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'd even I'd even go so I even go so far, so far to say that a good chunk of the um, Golden Age superheroes might qualify, although some although some of them more so than others. Like say, sure. Al, Alan Scott, the um, Golden Age Green Lantern, would certainly count for this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Whereas. Mm-hmm. Um, as up, uh, whereas gold, um, golden age, ba- golden age Batman could could also count purple gloves and all. Yeah, even to, even to this day, I still don't get that. <laughs> I don't either. Um, yeah, um, Phantom Lady. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of characters would really, really apply because you well, you know, Batman started in Detective Comics, so <laughs> yeah. Which was kind of your evolution from the uh, Detective Pulse, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, the the big reason why the Golden Age is called the Golden Age when it comes to comics is that it wasn't all superheroes. In fact, um, in fact, the whole superhero concept was still pretty not pretty novel as we understand it. Oh yeah. Oh. Um, it and um. There, and there were a whole lot of other genres that are being represented in sequential art, and then, and then of course, local Wortham ruins everything. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but getting back to heroin adventure, when it came to what, when it came to the character of Ava Atlas, um, I've talked with some people in the past who ended up creating a character and then created a world around them. Was that the was that the was there a similar thing going on with um, Ava where she where she was made first and then the rest of the world was made ar- was made around that idea? Kind of. Um, I, I had uh, and, and this may not be the last one we see specifically, you know, especially if there are uh, future issues. But um, I I had a few characters in mind that I wanted to do, and I thought. You know, since I can't, you know, I'm not going to go be able to probably use Doc Savage or the Shadow or Operator Number 5 or the Spider or any of those guys from the old days. So I thought it would be cool if you could have 
a collection of a few really good pulp, her- pulp heroes that all existed, like uh, kind of like a shared universe, I guess you could say. Um, so I had a few ideas, um, character-wise. Uh, that's kind of how the character of Inspector Sin ended up in this story. Um, but, uh, yeah, I kind of... Um, yeah, for for the most part, it did it did begin with the character, and then I kind of built everything around her because you know, with her, you know, you need to, as far as her origins and things, you already established things about the world. Well, okay, well we know that this and this can exist, and uh, you know, there's a little bit of sci-fi elements, and uh, you know, so on and so forth, and then uh, yeah, just build it piece by piece from there. When it co- when it comes to these sci-fi elements, I th- I think wh- I'm guessing one of your um key- one of your key things is to make sure that it is within the realm of weird science. So the so the high basically the basically the highest amount of tech you'd go with you'd go with is what everybody thought atomic w- atomic was back in the fifties. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, people might be able to. Yeah. Very much. It's very much science with an exclamation point on the end. You know, science with an exclamation point. Um. Yeah, people may be able to. You know, create weather control machines or death rays or, you know, that sort of thing, depending on your level of madness. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh. You know, there'll be you know, uh, kind of high tech gadgets and stuff here and there. You know. Um. The. Di- I immediately think of the Dick Tracy watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, shoot, man. Um, in Doc Savage, uh, night vision goggles, um, the answer machine, automatic transmission. A lot of things appeared in Doc Savage as sci-fi before they were real in real yeah. life. So um, hopefully we won't have any weather controlling machines soon if so the good guys will have them and we can just use them to be like spring weather today please but uh you do realize that if i get control of a weather machine i'm just do, i'm just i'm just gonna do that to to um give california a very long winter just so i can just so i can watch them squirm yeah <laughs> time to freeze so let's see how your wind see how your windmill is like ice but uh well, un- no. unfortunately, I-, I would say that I would ca- that I would ca- that I would use it to cause an earthquake that would flatten half of Denmark. But Denmark is flat as a pancake anyway, so nobody would notice. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying, the highest point of Denmark is the Czech Republic. Um, but w- but what I find interesting is is unless I'm unless I'm mistaken, even though even though Heroin Adventure number one is going to be the um. Is going is going to be the first appearance of the heroine Ava Atlas, who is who is very much in the is very much in the super strength as her as her main power, clearly. Um, mm-hmm. This isn't an origin story for the character. Correct. Um, I'm cur- and um, obviously this isn't the first time I've I've se- I've seen this kind of thing because I had cider hype on not too long ago and he's not doing an origin story when it comes to the colossals. Um, what was your reasoning for just going for just going straight in just going straight into it? Is it is it uh, because the origin will it's not incredibly um the, the origin's not really an incredibly important part of the story. It it will be um it will be revealed. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll get into it in issue number one, but it's not, you know, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty, uh, like I say, it, it's not really a major part of the story. It's more, more, it, it's not, you know, it doesn't drive the plot or whatnot. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, her parents were scientists, um, studying, uh, they were chem, you know, chemical biology, um, and they were researching uh, ways to help the human body heal faster, recover from injuries, maybe slow the aging process, those types of things. And um, inadvertently, as will be explained in the book, as we will discover, um, Ava was affected by this and thus was born a little different 
and then as she grew up uh her bone structure you know her bone density heart you know her bones were more dense than normal her muscle structure was more dense um and so yeah there's no like uh you know she wasn't abducted by aliens or uh no 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 um freak accident in a lab caught causing causing her to causing her to go to go she hulk right yeah no no get no uh radioactive spider bites um so yeah no the story uh, it's kind of um it's kind of one of those things that would especially with something like this if you get into the story and just get into the action um you know you can detail things like this throughout the story as you go so it's not a uh, you know, it's not like she's going to start the story as a normal normal person until something happens that makes her super and whatnot. But, uh, mm-hmm. uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, no, not an origin story because, like I say, the origin itself isn't really, it's not really all that important, to be honest. So... <clears throat> I can, I can certainly get, I can certainly get that. Um... Now, when it comes when it comes to that strength, I know I I know I made a crack about about um, She Hulk, but how but how um how str- how strong would you say, would you say that she falls into? I would say somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, I don't know half a half a ton up to a ton, something like that, as far as which is which is still way beyond anyone else uh as far as known even even in this pulp world so um but yeah i don't know um ton or so maybe yeah I so she, she could she could turn over uh one of, you know without giving too many spoilers one of the first thing that that actually happens in the story is uh she, you know, she can dump over your jeep with some dudes in it. Um, so, but uh, yeah, like I say, uh, not throwing tanks or airplanes or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, but w- with the with, but when when you mentioned when you mentioned um, that that kind of bone density setup, I get I get the feeling that. If she if she were to say step on step on a step on a scale the the um scale would probably break. I, I don't know if it'd break, but she probably certainly weighs a lot more than she looks like she does. <laughs> um, so yeah, she's probably a good yeah. I mean, two hundred two hundred twenty five pounds maybe. Um. I haven't gone into the exact science on that one, but, but as far as, not, as, far as I, you know, if I had to guess, um, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, <laughs> now, when it, now, obviously, obviously, um, obviously, within within this kind of thing, and I, th- I think one of the other appeals with um, pulp is the is the simplicity of the factor, because even though we're doing a pulp, even though we're doing a very much pulp superhero, we're not trying to do anything more complex than there's a face and there's a heel. Yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty accurate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, there will, you know, there's, you know, you've still got, uh, uh, yeah, it's very plot driven. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that characters will be one dimensional or that they won't change or evolve over time because, what happens in any particular story will certainly, you know, will of course be canon from then on. Mm-hmm. And, um, but, but yeah, um, you know, here's the bad guy. Here's what he does. Here's what he's all about. Now, how are you going to stop him? And uh, that, that's, that's pretty much what we're looking at here. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but when it, now, when it comes to, when it, com- when it comes to the bo- when it comes to the villain end of things, you you decide you you went with the ho- 
the whole idea of the sleeping dragon being the being the head of this um this this massive cult. Um, mm-hmm. what I'm curious we've already we've already talked about some of the ins- some of the inspirations, but I'm, what I'm curious about is what what would you say were some of your inspirations to go with the approach you did with the sleeping dragon as the um, central antagonist of the story? It's actually a character. Um, the character of the sleeping dragon is something uh, that I've had in mind for quite some time. I originally developed it as, and it, it kind of started as an idea that I was going to possibly use in a uh, in a tabletop RPG. Um, mm-hmm. And it was kind of this organization that I had developed, and. Uh, I don't know. I just um, I've always been a ma- uh, fan of a lot of the uh, you know your big pulpy criminal mastermind characters like uh, Fu Manchu, Professor Moriarty, those kind of guys. Um, and so I kind of wanted to do something along that that route. Um, and then, of course, as you were saying earlier, the uh, the general interest in things from the Far East and such like that from the mm-hmm. from the time period these books were, you know, their heyday. Um, I felt like that was kind of a kind of an homage to that as well. So, um, so yeah, we've got a dark sorcerer who runs a cult. <laughs> Who uh, you know? Yeah, you can pretty much imagine he probably wants to take over the world or some other nefarious schemes, right? Mm-hmm. Or just to, or 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 t- I was gonna I was gonna make a joke about tr- about trying to about um trying to take over the world, but that's way too that's way too easy. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, like Pinky in the Brain. Yeah, um. yeah, like like I like I said, way too easy. <laughs> so uh yeah speaking of pinky in the brain um actually chapter one um the very the uh the intro to the story is uh the sleeping dragon's prison escape so <laughs> so as as we begin he will be in he will be in prison from uh i, I had the, i had the idea that i wanted to make it where uh, he would have been a pulp villain some years earlier in um in China until he was defeated by uh, a character who's sort of the equivalent of a paranormal investigator for the time mm-hmm. um called Inspector Sin I mentioned him a little while ago so uh that's a yeah, that's how Inspector Sin will play into the story of course because once he finds out the dragon has escaped um he decides he needs to come out of retirement for a little bit. So, mm-hmm. and when it com- now when it comes to when it comes to a character like that, obviously, um, I know I know that you have I know that you plan to give to give him the spotlight in a, nove- a novella with this project. But when it comes to Inspector Sin himself, mm-hmm. is are, is the is the main is the main setup that he has in the in the primary story here that of a um, mentor type of archetype? Yeah, to a degree. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's kind of the experienced, uh, and certainly experienced at dealing with this particular villain. Um, so, and you know. Uh, and especially in regard to, you know, dark sorcery and magic and evil spirits and that sort of thing. So, which which the Sleeping Dragon kind of um, plays into as well, because he's uh, he's studying those arts and seeking to enhance his powers at all times. So, um, so yeah, I would say Inspector Sin. He's he's kind of uh, he kind of plays the role of. Not so much mentor because Ava does have her own supporting cast, um, which will be introduced. But uh, he's almost like a uh, almost like a team up character in a way. So, um, as far as this particular story is concerned, so um, and I, given um, which it, which is an interesting prospect because. 
you're because when try when trying to do a a team up, um, there's always that careful balance that has to be made so that one so that one side of the team doesn't overshadow the other or or someone or someone feeling like a bit player in their own story. Mm -hmm. um, how how what's the approach that you that you have to make sure that even though this is a team up with two characters that are that are being first introduced here. How do you make sure it? Ha how do you make sure it? Fe it has the kind of gravitas that a team up with established characters would feel like. Uh, because uh, at this point in the story, uh, Ava's still pretty young. She's still pretty early in the whole adventuring career or whatnot. Um, while Inspector Sin is more, he's already retired some years ago. Um, his career is winded down, and uh, but now now he's going to come out of retirement for for hope for you know to him one last one last thing he's got to do, um, and so uh, you know. While I, while I call it a team up, Ava certainly is the protagonist. But you know, like I said, uh, with Inspector Sin's career winding down, um, you'll be able to find out a little more about him and the novella that goes with it as well. Um, that's an entirely separate story featuring him. Um, and then, likely, anything I do from here with that character will probably take place before this, since we are at the end of his career at this point. So, um, but, uh, uh, you know, other stories in the future with him will probably be some years before this. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of how I balance it. Um, you know, like I say, Ava's kind of, Ava's kind of the new and he's kind of the old guard. And, uh, you know, there's no, uh, you know, he, he's getting up there in years. He doesn't have a lot of reason to, uh, you know, jump this rooftop when, uh, you know, some younger somebody could just jump that rooftop. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, yeah, um, you know, and then another thing is what, what you really have to watch out for, um, not so much with me or, you know, a lot of the people that uh, that I associate with, but... Um, uh, you got to a lot of it seems to come up a lot that um, a lot of people don't really they don't really get it right as far as um, writing a female character without having to make everyone around them be a bumbling buffoon. Like that's the only way um, that she can look good is if everyone else is a moron. Um, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Go, going with the um, go, going with going the going that particular route of 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 Mary Sueness. Yeah, it's like well, you know, she's not perfect, but everybody else is worse. Uh, you know, like I don't know. Um, so yeah, we avoid that. Um, because again, you know, there's no there's no reason. Uh, yeah, there's no reason for. Uh, yeah, Inspector Sin's not a bumbling buffoon, or <laughs> neither neither is her supporting cast. So, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it's just uh, like I say though, she's she's very much the protagonist. Um, so it's not so much uh, not so much of of a balancing act with this. I can I can get I can get that kind of thing. Um, when it when it comes now. One th one thing one thing that I um that immediately sprang out to me when I saw the profile of the daughter of the dragon Mei Shun, is mm -hmm. um is the is the con is the literary concept of the dragon, which I I realize I I am fully aware of the irony in me saying this, but the in shortest terms the idea of the dragon is the front is the front facing power for the for the hidden big bad um like if i have to use a star wars example darth vader would be the dragon whereas of course whereas of course the true the true end the true end villain is well emperor palpatine right in, in that kind right. of relationship 
because no nobody ever nobody ever sees or talks about the ab about the emperor. They mainly talk they whenever whenever um people end up pissing themselves over the empire's presence, it's usually Va it's usually Vader that th that's the face that they see. Um, right. Would that be would that be somewhat analogous to Mason, or am I um or am I misreading it? No, no, that's pretty no, that's pretty dead on. Um, that's pretty accurate. Uh, you know, the, the dragon. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, he's not the one that goes out and about recruiting and. <laughs> and, yeah, if he shows, you know, if you see him show up your, at your door, it's definitely bad. Mm -hmm. he, you definitely screwed up. Um, but so, yeah, very much, uh, very much so. He's kind of, um, he's kind of the man behind the curtain in a lot of ways. So, so yeah, very, yeah, very much like that. You know, when, if May Shun shows up, you don't really want that either. But. Uh, but more often than not, yeah. Mayshun or one or one of her agents are the ones who are going to be dealing with problems. Yes, correct. Um, and when shift shifting to Inspector Sin for a moment, um, now we've we've talked we've talked about anal we've talked about analogous heroes when we talked about um, Ava Atlas, but. What sort of heroes and pulp heroes would you say that Inspector Sin has more of his d shares more DNA with? Oh gosh, the um, I the main one that I keep that I keep thinking of is um, the Shadow. Yeah, um, the Shadow. Um, you know, a little bit of uh, you know, a little bit of just the uh, plain clothes detective. Uh, uh, you know, like, um, I can't really say Philip Marlowe because, you know, I'm not going to compare anything to Raymond Chandler, but, um, yeah, uh, the, the shadow is a good, uh, is a good, uh, example. Um, I, I would say, uh, yeah, it's, it's, he's kind of hard to, to, you know, pair up for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, very, very, uh, the shadow, um, any of, uh, any of the characters that involve, you know, anything involving weird or supernatural mysteries. Um, so, uh, and that's, uh, that's the highest profile one that I can certainly think of. Um, the character of the spider dug into some a little, but which I, um, and I get, and given given how much he's hold how how much he's holding it, would it be fair of me to say that the his particular watch is. So, is something that would play something that would play a ve a very major part in everything. You mean uh, you mean like in the story or yes? Uh, yes and no. Um, the, the the watch is uh, you know it's very useful, but at the same time, you know. He can't just whip it out every five minutes and say, G "Give me the lottery numbers or whatever." Um, so, uh, because it does take a toll on the user. So, um, yeah, I would say um, it's certainly an important artifact uh, in the world they live in, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, now, when it comes now. When it comes to the setup that you that you have, as 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 I understand it, you're doing what you're doing one um you're doing one full on issue, and and one um, novella. Um, what was the what was the reasoning in 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 do and um splitting it off like that of of a of a comic and a no, and a um, novella. Mainly this had to do with um, keeping it uh, just kind of keeping it authentic for the time period um, 
your typical pulps were 128 pages, so I wanted the magazine to be that length. Um, so that's, you know, it'll be 128 pages. And then, um, the, you know, and I needed that for the main story. And then, uh, yeah, I just thought it would f be fun to, um, I thought an Inspector Sin story and the tale of, you know, how he originally came to possess the pocket watch would be, uh, Certainly an interesting story that people would want to know either uh, that they can read before or after. Either way, uh, it's not going to matter which order you read it in. So mm -hmm. I can I can get I can get I can get behind that kind, that kind of concept. Um, and now as far as far as I'm, as far as I'm aware, this this would be the first this would be the first time that you had done a a novella in what in one of your crowd funds. Um, yeah. Did you ha did you have was this your first time trying to trying to do a full on novella period or have you dipped into this particular format before? Um, I've written a lot of prose um, over the years. That was uh, it, if I had been alive back in the day and I weren't a comic book writer, then then this would. be be what I would be doing so um so yeah uh you know writing a lot of adventure stories and prose uh magazines and so on and so forth um so so I've um I I've been into it a long time I've uh I, I hate to say studied and trained but um yeah no it, it's something it's something I've always enjoyed doing and always practiced and worked hard at so um because i didn't i you know i never really knew if if the comic book thing was was gonna happen so um but here we are right mm -hmm. and with with that with that kind of thing in with that kind of thing in mind um I'd also I'd also seen that one, that one of the tiers is essentially essentially a full on case. Is that mm -hmm. is that case meant to meant to just hold the cover the covers the novella and the adventure guide or would this or would this case be spacious enough for um, future issues? I would say. Um... It can probably hold. It'll probably be able to hold about four full-size books plus the um, plus the extra stuff. So um, it'll certainly be able to hold, you know, both covers of the magazine that come with it. You know, everything that comes with it. But yeah, you could probably put another, eh, probably another two in there. So probably about four of this size magazine altogether. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it claims to be, uh, I want to say 15 comics is what I think the size, the size of the case is supposed to, supposed to hold. Um, so, so yeah, probably about four. All right. I can, I can, I can most certainly get behind, get behind that. Um, now at at the time at the time of this recording you've managed to completely smash the the modest goals that you had with um 69 backers nice nah right. 69 dude sorry sorry i had i had to it was right there for me <laughs> smash <laughs> um but you, but um you're only asking for 5 you're only asking for 500 and you're just under 4200 at the time of this recording, which is eight times what you initially were shooting for, um, yeah. what are you what are you what are you aiming for as far as a release window for the, for Heroin Adventure? In November. No, November. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be really it'd be really funny if it released on November fifth, but that's but that's just me being a smart ass. <laughs> Um, uh yeah uh, uh yeah um I have a pretty quick turnaround on this one I think so and uh every everything's going smoothly so looking like looking like November 
yeah, I c I can I can most I can most certainly get be get behind that. Um and I'll be I'll be looking forward to seeing how to seeing how it develops. But Yeah, man, thanks. Yeah, we're um I really didn't know. I really didn't know um I really didn't have any expectations going into this campaign. I just knew it was something I wanted to do. It's something I've wanted to do for quite a while. So, um, so I was just going to do it regardless. <laughs> so, um, you know, the opportunity was there. It was a good time. Um, and so I figured I would do it, see what happened. And, um, it's been, uh, it's been quite impressive. So, um, then we're gonna see where it goes. I think we're doing pretty well. Yeah, and I and I will certainly be looking forward to that. But with all of that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy and enjoy the and enjoy the particular bit of madness that happens around here. <laughs> thank you, man. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Always a good time, man. Yeah. And anytime you see fit to return to the temple, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And, of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then... On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!